So, welcome back today. Um, today we're gonna take a look at our heating block for the injection molding machine. And we are done machining this. And now the next question is, we need to get this thing actually tight so we can uh, squeeze the plastic out of it without the plastic coming out of the top. So I had an idea for this. Um, when I started this started this project, uh, my base idea basically was the the plunger of my press is exactly 26 millimeters, so I just drill a <laughs> 26 millimeter diameter hole into the block, and then I can use the normal plunger from the hydraulic press to well get everything in place, and uh, in the background something fell over. Um, but it turns out the hole that I made is a little bit too large since my drill press wasn't the best and it uh, was a bit shaky and so if I would now use the normal plunger uh, from the hydraulic press I would have gaps so I have to tighten that up and I had an idea for doing that um, I need some kind of uh, rubber sealing um, that I can press into it and the problem is the whole thing will get like 250 degrees Celsius hot and That's too much for the <laughs> For the most materials I would normally use to tighten stuff up like those o-rings. They can't manage manage the high temperature uh, and that's why I decided to try something out and use a high temperature silicone. It's rated for up to 350, so that should not be a problem. And I actually tested a little bit of it before, just using my soldering iron uh, and setting up the temperature and seeing if it would hurt the silicone. And the silicone did absolutely fine, so uh, I'm convinced that, that this is the right way. Uh, what you see me doing here is um, the, the plunger. Basically, let me zoom a little bit in. I have here uh, a screw, it's an M8, and two washers and two nuts. And I just uh, built the whole thing like this. And now I have my piston head, so you can call it this thing. It just fits right in here. And let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> my perfect technical drawing. This is the plunger going down and this piece gets screwed into the end of it. So I will drill a hole and uh, tap, tap some threads in it. I already got a tapping set. <laughs> First time I've used this in years and I'm actually quite happy I didn't broke one already. Um, yeah, but like you can see this thing it would not be tight. Not at all. So we need to add some silicone to it. And we use this. And But how do I get the silicone around the setup? And my idea was where, well, let me just design uh, like a cup where I can put this thing in like this. And then I can put silicone uh, into it. Maybe a time lapse, a time lapse of me designing this thing uh, will be in like the corner of the video or something. If I include that, we will see. And yeah, I already did that. Like you can see here, uh, this is basically inside of here is the same thing. And now I'm waiting for the silicone to completely cure because normally it takes 24 hours, but this is way thicker. So <laughs> it may well take some time and then I have to flex the whole thing open to get it out. Uh, then I uncover the end of the screw and then I can just screw it in. So that's not what we're gonna do today. What we're gonna do today is make the other end tight. Because this side is the side that interacts with our mold. We have our mold here, like, opala, let me take it apart like this. This is one of the molds. I have like two of them. And here is the injection port. And the plastic comes out of this end here and has to flow inside of here. So 
this sits on top of each other like this. Let me zoom out a bit. Yes. But it would not be tight. And you can see I already tried to a little bit with silicone, but it was quite uneven. Um, so I'm gonna try it again. And yeah, trying to get this thing tight so the plastic can flow into the mold without getting anywhere else. And we're using again high temperature silicone. And uh, we're gonna, nah, where's my o-ring? Here, we're gonna use this o-ring, placing it on here, gluing it with hot glue in a few places, and then we just place the K2 silicone and uh, wipe off uh, the overstanding rest so we have a, a flat like rubber or silicone style washer in the end that seals the whole thing up. perfectly flat now. Now we're gonna let this dry and after it's dried we will remove the outer uh, o-ring, the hot glue and punch a hole in the middle so we have a, a, a port or injection port. So that's basically it for today. Uh, the next part of the video will be when I uh, <laughs> uncover this thing and try to get it to get it out of there so we can check if it actually if it actually uh, is useful as a sealed piston head for the whole thing. Uh, hey, it's me from the future. Um, uh, just a short thing. Um, I tried this and it didn't work out well. Um, it took almost two weeks to completely dry and then when I uh, took it out from the cup uh, uh, a few things ripped off and there are air bubbles inside and no, this thing just didn't work. Um, so that's it, that's why I uh, used the high temperature silicone to make some buffles and stack them on top to uh, make a ceiling. Uh, I actually was doing this in the time where this thing was drying and yeah, but as you will see, the baffles also didn't work out quite as well. And I had the problem that the ceiling I made on the heat block uh, on the lower side uh, got basically ripped off on the first try. But then I noticed I didn't actually need the ceiling on the on the, on the lower side of the heat block because if you press the, uh, the molds onto the heat block with enough force, you, you don't need a ceiling. So that's it. Now back to my... Uh, version of the past. So, welcome back. Um, what we have here is uh, the piston of the injection molding machine after some use. Um, I used uh, high temperature silicone uh, and I made baffles from it and used them to seal the piston head here. Uh, but now after some use we can see we run into some problems. Um, this is just some poly polypropylene that got ejected and yeah, as you can see I drilled a hole into the top of this piston and cut some threads into it so uh, that I can uh, mount a modular piston head so I can remove it and replace it if something went wrong because I knew those uh, high temperature silicone buffles aren't the toughest ones. Now, um, I'm not sure why. I guess uh, I put the piston in at a slightly wrong angle. And let me zoom in here. Maybe then you can see. Are we in focus? Yes. Uh, those are the buffles. There were like four of them and they got mangled on the side and ripped off. As you can see there are, those are 
one of the baffles and yeah so I have to make this piston head new and this time I'm not gonna use high temperature silicone from the uh, from a tube but I'm gonna use you maybe have seen those before let me zoom out a little bit those are soldering mats uh, those are used if you want to solder and you don't want to fuck up your desk so uh, those are high temperature resistive um, the internet or the shiny sources uh, say up to 500 degrees um, I doubt that but I will try to make my next uh, a piston head from this material and maybe it's hold it's holding up better to the to the pressure but actually I think the baffles were working fine the main problem was that I was pressing them into the heating block at a slightly wrong angle and then the one side got mangled between the piston and uh, the cylinder and began to rip off and then the rest ripped with it so let, let's see if this stuff is actually uh, <laughs> actually a good material for this so I will cut out some baffles from this and yeah then we will try again because right now I can't use my machine because I don't have a tight piston head So, um, we are done with the baffles, as you can see, um, they are stacked on top of the piston head and should work like this. Um, I maybe give them a little bit of a trim on the side so that they are all flat and then we are gonna test it out on the injection molding rig and uh, see if this type of silicone uh, can actually withstand the temperature that we are gonna use. Uh, so we needed to withstand about uh, 260 uh, degrees Celsius uh, because that's the temperature where we are molding or polypropylene. Uh, 